One of the bigger technical leaps that I had to make was learning how to use Docker. I'm not one that would naturally be using it. I'm not a system admin. I am not a developer. But in my shop, it was something that it was important that I learn. So I spent about two months learning how to use it and apply it to my area. And I found it is one of the coolest things I've ever dealt with because it is not a VM. Well, it is, but it's not. It's a lot more lightweight than a true virtual machine that you're used to seeing. So it spins up a lot faster and I find that it's highly customizable. I'm going to break this video up into two pieces. This piece we're going to be talking about the basic concepts and terminology so you and I can speak the same language and do some basic moving around. After that is done, next week I'm going to have a much longer video that is going to be on actually doing a walkthrough. We're going to be covering going out to the Docker store and finding developer C version 11.1 pulling it down, launching it with different configurations, making changes, saving it, and then end up creating a new image. So this is going to be the primer for next week. The first thing that needs to be explained is where do you get these Docker images? Well, they're in one of two places and you can think of it as a GitHub account only for Docker images. And there are two places. There is Docker Hub, which is just a community registry. Anybody can put things here, whether it be a company like IBM or a person like me. And then you have the Docker store. Now that's a little bit more of a tightly controlled ecosystem. And it's usually only for those that are corporations or businesses, and they may or may not charge for their image. Getting the, getting the image down is basically the same command. It's just with Docker Store, you may have to put in an ID and password and have paid for something. But in our case, especially if you're dealing with something like Developer C, it's going to be free. And that's one thing I'll clarify here. It looks like when IBM initially put their toes in the water with DB2, they created the Express C image in the Docker Hub, where the developer C is over in the Docker Store. The next concept to grab is the various terminologies or files or pieces that you need to make this work. And it gets a little confusing because I was really confusing the difference between an image and a Docker file. But a Docker file is essentially multiple lines of texts that are going to be compiled to create your image. So this is the code that's going to specify what operating system you're using. And I'm putting DB2 version 11.1. .1. I want you to move the binaries over there and install them and then go ahead and hit start. That Docker file is the set of instructions that will ultimately be compiled into an image. The image is what you want. This is the virtual piece that you want to spin up. And it's what you download from the various repositories. So I may have an image that is DB2 for 10.5 versus 11.1 .1 on CentOS versus Linux. That image is a specific recipe that you want to spin up into a container. And one image can spin up to multiple containers. So if I want two or three virtual areas of DB2 11.1 .1 on Linux, I can take that image and launch it three separate times and interact with each individual container. That's the end goal that you're trying to get to. There are a couple commands that I'm going to show you. This is not all encompassing, but I'm going to cover how to get images down, how to move them around, see what's there and delete them. We're gonna go more in depth about how to use them in the next episode when I do a walkthrough on installing developer C. But let's just start with the basics. If I want to get an image down, let's say from Docker Hub, when I go online and find the website and type in DB2, it will tell me explicitly what I need to type to make this work. So for example, if I want Express C, I am using the pull command. All Docker commands have the Docker prefix and then it'll be, for example, pull or run or exec, and then some sort of switch. 
in this case, Docker pull, go get this image. So I go ahead and hit enter. It's going to default and go get the latest copy. That's something else that's kind of cool. And you'll see it on other versions of developer C, for example. You can specify, specify I only want the one that is fix pack three or fix pack two or the base copy. All right, we're back. The file has been pulled down from Docker. There's no issue, we have it. So let's go ahead and see what images I have locally on my machine. To do that, it's Docker image list. Pretty self-explanatory, right? And it shows that I have two different, pardon me, three different images on my machine. It's a little hard to break this down at the command line level and so you can see everything clearly. So I'm going to bust out over here to this slide. Essentially, when you do an image list, it's going to give you, what, four or five columns here with some basic information working from the left to right. The first is the repository, and this will show whether it's locally on your machine or did you get it remotely from somewhere else. So here I have three different items. I have a dev C, which is something I created locally. It's, it's here. I also have the one that's from the Docker store, which is for developer C, and Docker hub, which is the express C. The tag is the version control. This is usually listed on the actual website when you're reading up on the image you want to download, or it's a tag you specifically gave that means something to you. And those two together, the repository and the tag, are often used to refer to the specific image you want. That or the image ID, which is assigned by Docker um, at downloader creation. And I bring that up because you can do things that are specific to the image and sometimes it gets to be a giant pain in the butt to refer to it as the image ID but you can refer to it as dev c colon 11.1 for example and it'll do the same thing what confused me for a long time was the created that is basically when the image was created not when you pulled it down or did anything with it so you could see the express c image for 10.5 that was created three years ago and hasn't really been updated at all where developer c is seven weeks ago and is up to fix pack three so we know what images we have have any of them been spun up into the virtual area or the container that i want to use there's a quick way to check that out it's docker container list and there's a catch here so be careful if i do docker container list you can see that i have one image spun up right now and this is a little misleading because if you notice here my status shows that it's been up for 28 hours what is not listed in the container list is what may have been stopped or is in execution mode or is in some other state other than up and running to see that you do docker ps minus a now you see that i have two containers two virtual areas that are there spun up from an image but one is up and running where one is just in created status how does that tie to my image? Look over here under the image name. Remember how I said you can refer to an image by its repository and its tag? We know that both of these are the developer C image that I had downloaded. Because I had to make the print so large at the command line, it was a little hard to see clearly what was up there. So I've essentially broken the output up into two lines and wanted to show you what each column was. So with a Docker container list, the first column is going to be the container ID. This is just like that image ID. You have nothing to do with it. It's automatically assigned by Docker. The image is what I was telling you before. What is it assigned to? And it's usually the repository colon and then its tag where the command is interesting and I'm not going to get too much into how Docker files work but essentially when you launch the image into a container 
it is told go do something whether it's install db2 or start db2 and then start watching a log whatever that command is is going to be there and it's usually something that will allow it to run into the background and not stop they created a self-explanatory i started this two hours ago um, the pardon me created is i created it two hours ago where status is i've been up for two hours the ports are kind of lengthy here when we do a a command to spin up the containers we often specify what ports should be exposed or opened so we can connect to it and then the name over here is a quick way to refer to the container this is something that you can give it at creation time in this case I can refer to the container as db2 server when I need to do things to it and real quick this is the docker PSA output just like the docker image list it's going to give you the same exact information but the ps-a is going to show you what is up as well as what's down or in another state one thing that got me the very first time i was dealing with images was i was suddenly getting all sorts of error messages about not having enough space not having enough space not having enough resources and that's because I was just spinning up image after container over and over again and it got a little unwieldy and deleting them or pruning things out can be a little confusing at first so I wanted to explain how to do this you can remove the container the image or both and it depends on what order you do things so if I have a docker image list and the docker container list here I can say I want to specifically only get rid of this container here and this is my developer C I can say get rid of this container but keep this container and make sure I continue to have my image it's six one half dozen the other and then you have to do things in certain order so I'm going to do this out of order because I want you to see what happens if you want to delete all the way down to the image the container must be done first so I'm going to get rid of my copy of developer C I want everything gone what happens if I try to delete the image it's easier for me to cut and paste the image ID but if I wanted to try to get rid of it it would be docker RMI remove image and then the image ID it's going to come back and say no you, you can't you have containers that are tied to this that are up and moving you could force it you could say get rid of the image and leave the containers but that's kind of bad practice so let's go and kill the actual container to get rid of the container it's docker rm for remove and then let's get rid of this one here right i'm just going to grab the container id let's see what happens no why because it's up everything has to be stopped so let's stop the containers docker stop and then give it the container name it's going to stop the active container which will allow us to remove the image now it does take a second all right now this one is not in stop state it's in created I don't know if I need to stop it or not so I'm just going to be cautious this may actually error out on me docker stop this container ID yeah no problem so what state is it in now docker ps minus a there we go uh, it's in created state it didn't have to stop but this one's been exited and just to show you the docker image pardon me docker container list now doesn't show anything because nothing's up and running well we're there we're good so far so docker ps minus a here are my two containers that are all stopped i want to go ahead and remove them so let's remove the first docker rm and then that first container ID 
and then docker rm and my second container ID docker ps minus a now I truly have no containers there's no virtual anything's out there running docker image list I still have my images though but I no longer want my developer C image that came from the Docker store because I actually used it and manipulated it and created a new image that I'm going to use from now on. So to get rid of this one here, I'm going to issue Docker RMI for remove image. And I could refer to it by repository and tag, but I'm just grabbing the image ID. Oh, it's saying I have a dependent. Oh, I know why. The reason I am not able to delete this image is because this one was created from it. I bet you that will solve my problem. Docker RM. Remove the image ID. Oop, Docker RMI and remove the image ID. Now, Docker RMI, this image ID. There we go. They were correlated, so I had to delete it first. Docker image list. There we go. And I've cleaned down all the way over to Express C. So if you want to delete your image, you must delete your container first. If you are going to delete a container, the container must be stopped first. All right, one last review, kids. These are the commands that we talked about today. Now, I'm going to put a lot of these together next week in our next episode where I'm going to do a walkthrough of how to get developer C off of the Docker store and onto your local up and running. The commands we covered were pull, which is what's going to get things from the repository. Things we didn't cover yet, but we will next week are run and exec. Those are actually spinning up your images into containers. The Docker image list is going to show you what's locally on your machine, the images that you have. The PS-A is going to show you all containers in any state. But remember, you also have the Docker container list. Docker container stop is going to stop any container, which is going to allow you to do the remove statement below it, Docker, R, Docker RM. And then finally, Docker RMI is going to remove the image on your local. That covers it. You should have a good understanding now about the basic concepts and terminology, and we're going to apply these next week with our DB2 Docker installation walkthrough.